okay all all is work facebook live and youtube channel and in one minute we can start a uh, first video and then with the content of the script i i mute my audio Hola, uh, bienvenidos. My name is Daniela Simbieda. I'm from uh, the Leonardo, the International Society for Art Sciences and Technology. We're very excited to be here today to celebrate Leonardo's 50th anniversary uh, with the radio, television, live uh, with Uruguay, Mexico, Bologna, and all over the world. Um, there's actually three dates that we'll be doing this celebration uh, today. And the next one will be July 27th and then November 22nd with an in-person event 19 through 23 of November. So I hope you will be able to join us today and at these subsequent events because we'll continue to have the discussion. We're very excited to be here and uh, create a dialogue and discourse. So... I want to, first of all, thank everyone who supported this virtual symposium. Uh, this is a group effort and we're very pleased to have it. I'm gonna read off some of the names of the, of the organizations and some of the people who ha had a lot to do with putting this together. Uh, this event is organized by Anilla Cultural in Uruguay and supported by the National Network of Mexico, as CUDI, C-U-D-I, and Uruguay. RAU, and we count on the collaboration from the National Network in Colombia, Chile, Brazil, and also special thanks to Luis Cardenas, uh, the Managing Director, and Mark Ubran, CFO of Clara Network, Clemente Estable Biology Research Institute, the Public Translation Department for English and Portuguese, and the School of Law of the Republic, and thanks to all the student volunteers. And of course, thanks to Delma Rodriguez, who um, act, put all of this together, who is the brain trust behind this. So thank you guys very much. And uh, we're gonna have this session where I, uh, I will be giving a sh short presentation and then introducing you to the other uh, participants who will create, uh, will create more of a discussion and dialogue and there'll be time for uh, questions and answers afterwards. Okay, so do you do you see the presentation on the screen? The slideshow. Okay, perfecto, gracias. Okay, I'm going to go. Um, I, I mentioned I'm with Leonardo, but I'll explain to you uh, what Leonardo is about. So ne next slide. Uh, la próxima. 
sorry, can you can you move the slide to the next one? Thank you. Um, and I'm going to start with a, a little context and history about Leonardo. Next slide. So the practice of artists and scientists working together is not new. Even prior to Leonardo da Vinci, which our name is after, there were centuries of cross patterns, algorithms, and mediums between the artists and scientists. Those two disciplines were, were merged together for, for centuries before they were separated. Next slide. In the 20th century, it defined separate paths for the different disciplines. So that's where you started to see psychology, in its own category, art in its own category. And then over the years, Leonardo has really started to bring the, this back together. So while scholarly work became hyper-focused on one discipline or another, the natural curiosity of the other was practiced in silos and created a network of connections. So our founder, who is a rocket scientist, his name is Frank Molina, he set out to bridge the network together uh, through a popular medium at the time, which happened to be the Academic Journal in 1968. In his work as an engineer, Molina had access to an abundance of periodicals and peers that had given to the fields uh, to, to, um, to really kind of help support each other and, and connect in between engineering and astrophysics and art and created these important new developments. And so he felt that at that time, there was a critical need to move this over into a platform of discourse that everybody could be able to um, move forward with internationally. Next slide. Uh, so Frank Molina was also an artist, so he he was both an astrophysicist, uh, was, was one of the creators, creators of, jet, of fuel. jet Fuel, and then, and he, then he, there's a, sorry, there's a reverb, I don't know where that came from, um, there, there's a, he was one of the creators of Jet Fuel, and also started the Jet Propulsion Laboratory with NASA, but he really understood the importance of, of of the of the creative abilities inside of the science disciplines. Next slide. So fast forward to today, Leonardo has uh, evolved over time. The, uh, in in its origins, we we were working primarily in print, but today there are many other aspects of Leonardo. It's not just journal itself. Next slide, which is which is now in its fiftieth year. What Leonardo is really known um, for today is this is its full organization, the International Society for Arts, Sciences, and Technology. And I want to emphasize the international word in this. This is our organization. In the night early nineteen eighties. Roger Molina, who's the son of Frank Molina, had started the actual organization, which we're umbrellaed over, as an understanding that it's not just about us publishing in uh, one medium, but it's a, a, about us creating a network or a platform for dialogue and discourse, and that we need to have this conversation not in one country and not in one discipline, but all over the world. So it's critical to us. To, that we elevate voices from Mexico, from Uruguay, from Bologna, from New York City, from Australia, that all these voices on a global level can be connected together. And this is where Leonardo, the International Society of Art, Sciences and Technology comes into play, emphasizing the word society as a network, as a community, as a movement. Next slide. So over the years, we've we've moved just um, not just with our with our core publication, Leonardo Journal, but we have other publications. We have a, a, a music journal in print. We have uh, a book series, and then we have a lot of open access material that comes out monthly, sometimes annually. I encourage you guys to look at our other publications. We also have an artist and scientist residency where we bring together. Um, six artists and six scientists to live together for one month out of the year. We have our international speaker series called Leonardo Art Science Evening Rendezvous, which is now in 30 cities around the world, uh, which is a decentralized network of, of, of talks. 
And then we do community gatherings, uh, different conferences and festivals and online uh, where we bring everybody together to, to, to connect and, and discourse. So how do we do this? How, how does actually Leonardo function? We don't do anything alone. Everything that we do is through partnerships. So just an example of who we connect with. Uh, we, we're, we're not discriminatory against who we wanna collaborate with. Everyone who wants to connect with us has something to contribute. We survive on a gift giving economy. So we bring together scholars, theorists, change makers, universities, artists, labs, governments. So this is really a, a more of a community effort and Leonardo doesn't see itself in the middle, but we see ourselves as sort of the, the thread that ties this fabric together. Some of our main partners who we work with on a daily basis, just to give you a sense of that, is a lot of our publications go through MIT Press. This is who you would be working with if you wanted to actually subscribe to any of the Leonardo publications. Uh, we also work annually with ACM Seagraph, the largest computer imaging conference and, uh, that has conferences in all over the world and chapters all over the world. Um, our, the University of Texas at Dallas, where our executive editor, Roger Molina, is, uh, resides, and we work with his team to help build our aggregator platform called Arteca. We're supported in part by the National Endowment for the Arts. It's a government-funded agency that helps support our residency. And then we work with our residency with the Jurassic Resident Artist Program in California. And then most importantly, we work with a lot of our laser hosts, which are in 30 different cities around the world, who are really about how we build our grassroots community, our grassroots movement. Their communities that they work with feed back into the Leonardo community and we connect everyone together. And then our Leonardo affiliate members, and these are our top institutions around the world who work with us closely, who we support through programs and opportunities, and we see as part of our core uh, collaborative network. Sorry. Um, so I wanna talk a little bit about cybernetic serendipity. So I wanna give you a little sense of Hold on a second. I want, to, I want to give you a little sense of where a lot of this started from. So in the late 1960s, there was a big movement of computer art, and there was a movement of where IBM, uh, Nokia Bell Labs, Frank Oppenheimer, Frank Molina all started to gather together and create a lot of what we understand now is contemporary new media art. This started with is a pivotal moment with this uh, with the exhibition called Cybernetic Serendipity, which was at the London ICA in 1968, around the same time that we were founded. But this same sort of questions that came out of this particular exhibition are still really relevant today. If you can go on to the next slide. So one of the interesting questions that came out of this is, as, a, as one, a scholar wrote, is how does media art deal with its own history and the underlying socioeconomic forces that render it possible? I really think about this question a lot because this, is, this was a question that was written around 1968 and looking at how is this relevant? And now we are 50 years later and this question we can still ask this today in the same context and in you know, looking at technology and art and science and art, engineering and art. How do we actually think about that? So I'm not gonna necessarily answer this question, but I just, as, I wanna lay this out there as a foundation to start to think about as we look at the way that we are connecting with, with society, with culture, with, um, with social issues, that, this is something that all the artists and scholars and scientists that we work with are addressing on a daily basis. So 
as as I kept as I've been mentioning, Leonardo is in its fiftieth year, and we actually have been celebrating all around the world in around so far I think today makes about twenty twenty one international events. I think in total we're gonna have twenty seven international events. And this has been a really uh, in, in, uh, amazing and and humbling moment for us, where we started to see partners from all over the world n connect with us because we connected with them. And what this means to us looking at these global events is not just to celebrate Leonardo. I'm actually not as interested in that. Um, what this is, is to celebrate and understand and listen to what these dispersed communities are doing in their own environments uh, around the topics they are interested in. Some of these events have been connected to festivals um, that are around issues around biocreation and peace. Some are specifically geared towards um, celebrating just Leonardo with a with a cake and a reception and and um, just community building. And some are about building critical discourse, focusing around the topics of Leonardo's mission. And today we're gonna talk about two of the different events that really focused on really building that core Leonardo community in their own uh, regions. Go ahead, next. So I'm going to introduce these different speakers, but before they speak, I'm going to I'm going to just show who they are, and then I'm going to pull out a couple questions. So last July, we worked with Pierre Luigi Capucci, who is a theorist, writer, professor uh, in, in Bologna, Italy, who had this idea of bringing together not just the Leonardo network, but another critical network, which was the Yasmin network based in the Mediterranean. And in, in from last July, he brought the Yasmin network and the Leonardo network together to, to really have deep dialogue and discourse around transdisciplinary art and science in an event called Art, Science, History, and, and New. And I'm going to let him talk more about that in a minute, but I just want to lay that out there um, in the context of, of, of what uh, th this particular event meant for Leonardo. And then also I encourage you to look at his bio online because he has a, a lot of very interesting um, contributions to the new media world and in, in in, in theory and history. And the next... Uh, after Pierre speaks, uh, Pierre Luigi speaks, and we'd like to introduce Dr. Luz Maria Sanchez, who is a professor, a transdisciplinary artist, a researcher, an academic at uh, uh, UAM in in uh, in DF in Mexico City. And in a couple months ago, in in April, UAM and then UNAM, the other big university in Mexico City, came together to put to, uh, a day of discourse and dialogue for the Latin American region uh, around what Leonardo's participation and contribution may be for that. And I'm going to let her go into more details about what were some of the outcomes from that particular event and um, and sort of where the, where her community in that region uh, has developed or has thinking of going forward into. So do I have now Luz and Pierluigi on the call with me now? Okay, I think you're both in here. So I wanna make sure you guys are unmuted. So I'm gonna unmake, I'm gonna unmute you guys, or I don't think I can unmute you. Maybe Luz, um, Delma, you can unmute them both. I'd like to ask you a couple questions before we get started. So um, I, I see. I see your. You got. You. You are. Okay. Luz is unmuted, but Pierluigi, if you can unmute yourself too, that would be great. Um, so the first question that I have for you is how How do you imagine the future of transdisciplinary practice? So maybe we can start with Pierluigi if you want to respond to that question. Okay. Uh, hi, Danielle. Uh, hi all, uh, thank you for inviting me. 
is, is a great magazine and uh, um, the cultures of Leonardo and the relationship among uh, art between art and science are very important for us. So to get to your question, um, normally I see when uh, I read the uh, curricula, the curriculum of artists and, and uh, theorists, uh, the word uh, uh, interdisciplinary or multidisciplinary, um, but uh, maybe the idea of uh, uh, is uh, more correct because uh, the first one is uh, mainly about maybe I can I can show slide just one moment mm. just one moment. Can you see the? Do you see it? Um, no. No. Shared my yeah. my. Yeah, we, we can share your presentation. Yeah, but anyway, anyway, it's trend disciplinary uh, an idea and interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary because it goes beyond the discipline. And uh, uh, for instance, there is a mathematical metaphor that can explain the difference uh, between multidisciplinary and interdisciplinary and transdisciplinary. The mathematical metaphor is multidisciplinary. Two and two are four. It is a classic, a classic, uh, a classic uh, 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 mathematical uh, uh, addition. And the food metaphor is salad, because in the salad you add the ingredient, adds, um, and, and this ingredient remains uh, separate. Interdisciplinary instead is uh, more synergistic, and uh, uh, if in, in this idea, the sum is big. Two and two are five. For instance, the food metaphor is a gas beyond because uh, the uh, carrier process is a uh, construction of uh, uh, a, some kind of synthesis of disciplines. So uh, to, to get the met met metaphor two and two are is yeah. So we, it means going back to. Uh, a classic, typical mathematical realm. And the food metaphor is the cake. Um, transdisciplinary is not uh, important uh, to uh, make uh, collaborate the different disciplines, uh, but also uh, in the educational realm, because uh, uh, we have to, to have in mind that the first, uh, th this uh, term was introduced in 1970 by Jean Piaget. Jean Piaget uh, has been uh, a figure in the field of uh, education. So uh, uh, this means that what you get uh, uh, using and working in a transdisciplinary way is uh, more uh, is much more than, than a sum, much more than uh, what you think, and uh, it goes in, in different in different realms. So, getting to to your question, uh, transdisciplinary means that, for instance, art and science uh, have to collaborate in deep, but this deep doesn't mean that art as uh, just a of uh, uh, simply a, 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 a communication, uh, but that art can generate in science uh, acquisition reciprocally. But, uh, and, uh, sorry, it can get for science. Okay, thank you. You're, you're you're breaking a little bit up during that, so I'm, I apologize if I didn't get every every word in there. Um, 
and I do actually just recognize some of the time. So I'm gonna, actually going to ask uh, um, uh, uh, Dr. Luz if you wanted to respond to that. And then what I think we'll do, because of I want to give time for both of your presentations, is after you respond, we'll come back to Pierluigi, who, who, who will present uh, some more of, uh, of his findings. And then we will work on it with you, because I noticed that we it's almost uh, um, half past the hour. Yeah, okay. Well, okay. Uh, I, I want to say uh, thank you to Delma and, of course, Danielle and Perluigi. How are you all? Uh, I'm very happy to be here and to be able to share some of our work uh, with the Leonardo Network. And, um, well, just to, to keep on with the program and trying to answer your question, uh, well, I think uh, how we're going to imagine this future of a transdisciplinary practice, I really think that it has to be through arts and creative approaches uh, mm -hmm. and working uh, within certain communities in a one-to-one, -one, you know, a, a very human scale. Uh, I think that that could be some of the answers or, or, or at least the answer we can, we can uh, offer from our experience. Uh, when we come back with, uh, with our own um, spaces to talk about our, our um, um, uh, work, I will, I will talk about our university and how we're dealing with this. But I think it has to be through the arts, for sure. Mm, that's interesting. Um, I think these are very, very critical perspectives of this. I, I like to, there are so many things I could ask you right now, but I do, I want to make sure I give this right space. Um, so what we're, what we'll do right now is I'm going to shift it back over to Pierre Luigi. Pierre, um, the audio, just to let you know, we're, we're having some trouble with it. So, so um, I may flag you if I can't hear you. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. okay. Do you can, okay. My voice. Go ahead. You, voice. Yes. Yes. Okay. Great. Great. Mm -hmm. So um, I I can present what we have done uh, last year in uh, for Leonardo uh, shortly. Uh, well, we um, had a celebration. I have to say that uh, a great importance in some, in our. Uh, uh, event uh, um, was uh, uh, a great merit was by Nina Xagledi. Nina Xagledi, uh, who, who is in the board of Leonardo and the UNESCO um, uh, person and uh, a teacher, that asked me, why don't you do uh, anything uh, uh, in Italy uh, on Leonardo. I, of course, I knew Leonardo from a long time. So um, we invented this uh, uh, conference. It was a um, good conference, a big conference for for us, uh, more than 30 um, part participants. And um, um, the topic that we gave to this conference was uh, the uh, new and history, the new and history, that in some way uh, it uh, um, mirrors the, the idea of the next years, the next 50 years of, of Leonardo, uh, because Leonardo has a, a great history and uh, I, I, I think also a great future. But also uh, perfectly fits in a, in a reality in a culture like the Italian one that um, um, everybody knows that uh, as a great uh, cultural heritage. And this means that uh, uh, this cultural heritage, like uh, that is in Italy, but also in many European uh, nations, and I think worldwide. Uh, can be, can be, can be, uh, can be uh, 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 revamped through new technologies, uh, new media, and through sciences. So the idea was to uh, to uh, reflect about uh, this. The the third topic, uh, the third topic, uh, uh, was about uh, a discussion that uh, um, is mainly in the states, but that uh, it started spreading. That uh, is that is called sometimes from stem to steam, from stem to steam. Mm -hmm. That means uh, from uh, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics uh, to steam as science, technology, engineering arts and mathematics integrating the art in this curriculum. Um, I think the, this is very important. Just this week, I 
I, I got this uh, very interesting conference with you all, and today I had another conference in the, in the afternoon in the uh, Joint Research Center, European Joint Research Center. The, the GRCs are uh, six in all Europe and make research, scientific research. Uh, this is the second year that the instructors have understood the importance of integrating art inside their work. And so the event that put together about 30 artists that are selected and that collaborate with the researchers and scientists that are in this center, putting together uh, in uh, this week, because this, uh, this uh, uh, event uh, lasted uh, one week, uh, and then uh, the uh, outcome will be uh, put in a catalog and exhibition in Italy. So in some way, this idea of uh, from stem to steam that uh, uh, for instance, Roger Malina is uh, is uh, uh, fostering, is sustaining a, a lot, uh, as come also 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 here, and uh, and I'm very glad to participate to this kind of uh, of uh, of event. As uh, we have also a um, collaboration with Yasmin. Can you hear me? With Yasmin, Yasmin is. Uh, is uh, an important um, uh, main list uh, about our science in, in the Mediterranean rim, and we had a discussion on uh, on the topic of uh, of uh, the uh, Leonardo C Fifty uh, event last year. On the topic, we, I uh, involved people from uh, all the Mediterranean rim, from Tunisia, from the Balkanic uh, uh, Peninsula, from Italy, of course, from France, and so on. Uh, and uh, I, I'd like that uh, this kind of appointment uh, could be uh, uh, annual, yearly. Uh, we, we can hear about this topic, uh, for instance, uh, um, starting a three-year program about climate change. And is uh, uh, main. May I, uh, I, I? I'm talking very, very. Very. My voice doesn't. Sorry, sorry. Can you? Re uh, sorry, can you repeat it? You cut out. You cut out. Can you repeat what you just ah. said? I am. Answer. Uh, be. Um. Will. Uh, Climate change, art and climate change, because uh, a great climate change uh, that is a, a complex that involves globally all the world. Uh, climate change is local and global, and it changes uh, the economy, the populations that affect, and we are program on this topic, a three-year program on climate change. Uh, maybe if you want, I can, pre I can present my presentation, but um, I, I, to your other host, if you want. Yeah, so... Um... You cut out a little bit at the end there, but I think you you asked about sharing the presentation. Um, so I go on presenting. Yeah, so I'm gonna um, okay. Um, I think de one second here. So de um, you we're having some technical dif difficulties, Pierluigi, with your audio. So I think this is what we're going to try to do is they're going to try to solve this, but I'm going to sw apologies. I'm going to switch over to lose first while yes. they solve some of the sound um, issues because you've been you cut out a lot at the end. I hope that's okay, okay. with you. Um, so we'll just reverse this <laughs> a little bit. Yes. Uh, we'll 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 get to all of it, but you know. Um, so, um, uh, Dr. Luz Maria Sanchez, do you want to share a little bit more about what you're working on um, and about what you worked on on the 19th and also with the university collaborations that, that are happening with you? 
Yes, uh, I'll be happy to. And I'm going to share my uh, screen then so we can uh, also check on, um, on the presentation that uh, I prepared. And uh, uh, basically, I, I try to build everything around this first question that you posed, uh, Danielle. I think it's a, it's, a, it's a really open one and allows us for uh, um, trying to imagine. I think the word imagination is, is the key word here and transdisciplinary practice. What I prepared on, at the beginning was uh, like an overview of uh, uh, what the, the UAM is here in Mexico and how we work, what's our present. That was, that was one of the main um, areas of my presentation. And then I wanna talk about how we are actually working in transdisciplinary ways uh, through UAM and its different divisions. And also uh, maybe talking about what the future could be. And, and it's something that we're working now, that we are imagining together, and then we're trying to put together uh, uh, through uh, our uh, university. These are just ideas, but uh, it's, a, it's a really nice time here in uh, Wang because we're really uh, imagining, really trying to put together some projects and. And, and, and go forward. Well, I wanted to share how the logo of, a, of our university is built because it's a university that is based on a tradition, of course, but it is open, uh, it is flexible. And one of the main uh, uh, aspects of the university is that it interdisciplinary and autonomous. And the motto is house open to time. Um, and then I'm gonna share some numbers about the university, but just to say that this is the second public university on the rankings of higher education in Mexico. And uh, it was founded in 1974. And since the beginning, it had this multidisciplinary perspective. Uh, um, has five campuses. I work in Lerma and the last one, but it has Azcapotzalco, Guajimalpa, Iztapalapa, Xochimilco. Uh, for the ones that can see video, you can see more or less in Mexico City where they are based. Uh, and I have the, what, the, the site of our university on the bottom of each one of these slides. And we have different divisions, academic divisions. And so the idea here is that uh, digital arts and uh, all the creative work uh, is going to try to cross around all the different uh, divisions of knowledge that we have in the university. Um, one of the uh, main issues about uni this university, about Guam, is that the, it's focused on solving social problems. I think that is one of the main uh, uh, specifics. And in the case of uh, Guam Lerma, or is the campus that I'm based in, uh, is transdisciplinarity and this kind of a modular system. And so we have research, yes, but we do have creation. We teach, we have duty with the university as, as, as teachers and, and professors. And uh, well, here's some, some more numbers that I wanted to share with you. But um, uh, the artistic and humanistic uh, fields of expertise, they go with other scientific and, uh, scientific and technological uh, fields. Um, just to talk about the areas that uh, we uh, develop here at the UAM in general, what we have from uh, sciences to social sciences to arts and culture, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so um, one other thing that I wanted to, to share with you is about how we work here in Lerma, in this kind of a small campus. We have three divisions. We have uh, social sciences and humanities. We have biological sciences and health and basic, basic sciences and engineering. We do have a digital art and communications uh, undergrad program, and we have an MA and a PhD in social sciences with a major in digital arts. And one of the things I, I, I want to really share with you about how we work with students. Some of the students were at the Leonardo 50th anniversary when we did this in April 19 of this year. Uh, we have three tracks. We have the methodological track, which is a creative one. We have the theoretical track, and then we have the technological track. And all these three uh, tracks where the student gets his knowledge and his, its ability, his abilities or her abilities, it comes together in an integrative track or a creative output. 
And so uh, that's one of the things that uh, Nina Ziglevi and, and uh, Roger Molina were able to witness when they were here in Mexico. We have these exhibitions of digital arts with students, which are undergrad students, not uh, grad students, and that makes us also very special with that. And well, of course, all our professors are professional artists as well, so we have exhibitions, publications. These are some of uh, our collection of publications that we would just uh, launched uh, two years ago and well we collaborate with all the other uh, divisions in this uh, in this uh, campus and so I come back to to the question how do we imagine the future of transdisciplinary practice and so uh, what we're going to try to do what we're trying to imagine how to do it and at least uh, for this, I think the collaboration with uh, Leonardo and the Society for Arts and Sciences. And sorry, uh, could, could you talk more slowly, please? Oh, uh, sorry. Yeah. Sorry, Luz, for the interruption. Oh, could, no. could you talk more slowly, please? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So thank um, you, thank you for the you're interpreters. Welcome. Thank you, thank you're you're you so much. And so uh, what we're trying to imagine now is how can we use all these resources that WAM has as, a, as an institution to have a, a strategy that maximizes all that? And so we have uh, our task now is how to imagine, how we uh, redesign and rethink all these parameters uh, where transdisciplinary practices at its core are existent resources, how we're gonna make it better. We think we are convinced that we need to integrate the citizen, the citizen. I think the 21st century is not just about sciences and arts, but about the uh, general public, the, the individual can, can, should be part of this equation. And with all that, we may be able to imagine new ways. And so um, uh, this is where we're standing now, and it's like a really, uh, uh, a challenge is a great challenge to uh, to be part of, and uh, well, these are just some of the elements that we're thinking we should they should be part of this equation. Uh, this kind of a hub about arts and sciences, humanities, citizenship, and um, finally, I'm going to share just some images about how it was experienced with uh, Leonardo on the 19th of April. Uh, uh, this is uh, the, the closing picture. We can see there uh, Roger and Nina with the group of students uh, uh, just finishing our, our first part of, a, of our program. Here are some of the students uh, presenting uh, Pichicucha with their uh, art projects at uh, UNAM, at C3, so they were partners with us on this. Uh, we had uh, students from UNAM and from UAM, and also some independent art students presenting the projects. So here's just some images of it. And uh, we had the collaboration with uh, TV UNAM, which is a, a television channel of UNAM. Uh, we also had some collaborations with, uh, of course, Radio UAM, and, uh, in general, and our students were making this kind of a different interviews with every one of our guests, so we can have a repository of uh, interviews, really basic interviews of uh, what art and sciences and how can we imagine this crisscrossing on the future. So uh, basically, um, this is what I wanted to share with you, and um, I don't know, um, maybe from here we can uh, keep on talking. Yeah, I think that's a really interesting way that you're approaching the program. I, I I think that it's, you mentioned something that I find incredibly important, and that's the idea of citizenship. Because ultimately, anybody who is going into sort of any education format is going to be contributing to the to the world in some way. And it doesn't matter if they're coming from medicine or art or engineering, every single human is a citizen, right? And then sort of umbrelling, uh, putting that umbrella on there uh, is, is really critical. So because of time, I wanna actually move back over to Pierre Luigi if he's ready. Are you, are you ready? I think that the, it is a very poor connection because I am in a zone that is not get well with the internet. 
maybe I can try to share uh, anything if you want. Yes, but can you hear me? We can hear you now, yes. Okay. I think maybe it's good that you'd have the video off and then you can share share some of your thoughts. And then um, if um, Delma has the, the the your presentation, maybe that, that could get shared over on this side, um, but it, it helps that the video was off for bandwidth. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so great, uh, great. Um... I, maybe we can skip the first slide. Uh, I have uh, I have already already uh, talked about them and about Leonardo fifty. Present a little bit uh, my research. The red slides feel quality because uh, in. The affair between art and things that uh, today it is uh, very important to to, uh, to see to watch uh, through the eyes of us and uh, um, and uh, in 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 my idea uh, there are uh, there are many technologies uh, i try to okay Can you see the screen May you see the screen? We see the screen, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. So uh, there are many technologies that I, I put uh, uh, in these slides. Uh, the, the, in the, the important thing is that just uh, uh, in, there are many technologies that are, that are uh, biology-based, so that uh, um, are uh, tied to the um, organic realm. Uh, for instance, biotechnology, genetic and synthetic type, robotics, um, and so on. And in you can see that it's Sorry, you can you, you can you you got you completely cut out. Okay. Uh, so I don't know. May I, may I hear me? May you hear me? I can hear you now, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it is very difficult to, 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 to get in touch. So I, I can say just a few things. Okay. That is uh, that, is, uh, that, is that, uh, that uh, I am working on a research that is called the Third Life. Uh, I, I, I have presented this research uh, in Australia, in South Africa, in, uh, in Moscow, Tour in in April uh, and, uh, and also in Europe uh, that is about uh, the life forms that uh, human culture is uh, is uh, is uh, uh, creating. Uh, all the seen in, in my are uh, dealing with uh, uh, organism. Of or uh, uh, also uh, entities that behave like uh, like uh, the living, and so the idea is uh, that we, uh, that uh, um, we are uh, we are uh, overcoming the uh, where uh, technology and the end of the and we are going where all these extension will power and uh, uh, behave more like uh, uh, living organism, uh, living entities. And this this idea is uh, is uh, is uh, uh, is the research that is last year. I I, I working on. Uh, I have been working on since. Okay, so Pierre Luigi, may I suggest something because because you did cut out for the second half of that. Um, 
I definitely want to make sure you, you have a lot of ability to input, but maybe perhaps what you could do is you could put some of it into the chat and then I could share out what you what you mentioned because the connection that is is very foggy um, often it cuts out the second half of what you say. So if you want to add it into the chat, then I can repeat it for everyone because otherwise I'm not able to follow. I don't think anyone else is either. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. So, but anyway, in the presentations that I, I sent uh, uh, to Delma, uh, this part are present. So maybe she can she can uh, show this. But yeah. I presented what I very the meaning of here. So. Yeah, so let, let's do this. Um, d uh, okay, so so we we're, we're running out of time. We have ten minutes till, but I will say that um, for everybody who's who's in this um, conference call, we can send this out in the emails as well. Is that is that Pierre Luigi authored a very beautiful report about this, and um, if if you don't mind, if we share that link with everybody, uh, if you want to send it um, for the for the uh, the the history and now that people can see that um and we can also put up the slides that you you had uh but we want to make sure that we have a, some room for questions and answers and if there's opportunity afterwards if people don't have to rush off we can we can have more of a um a dialogue it's so it's in such a short hour uh with the translations i wish we could talk forever but um we are running out of time so if that's okay with you uh, does anyone from the audience have some burning questions for for anybody, any of the presenters? So I'm looking in the chat room. So I think that I don't, I'm not sure who's who's translating or who, who's adding. But and I also open this up also to Pierre Luigi and 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 uh, and Luce if you have um, questions that you want to actually also put out there to the uh, to the group, we can do that as well. Okay, so um, uh, is it okay? Here's a good question from Isabel Pedraza. How can I participate? That's a really good question. So there's a lot of different avenues to 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 get involved in this dialogue and this d discussion. Uh, we have events all over the world, and if you wanted to um, put up the last slide or the second to the last slide from my presentation, if you go on to um, the Leonardo website, leonardo.info 50th anniversary, and I shall put it into the chat. There are a few different ways that you can participate there. One is attend any of the different events. We have a few events that even aren't listed on there. Uh, we'll, be do we'll be in um, China in September and Linz in September as well. And then we'll have a couple more US events happening in October. Uh, but our, our, our culmination event, our flagship event, is going to be in San Francisco, November through, 3rd through 4th. And this is a convening uh, of minds around some of this uh, uh, discourse that is a, it's not a conference, it's not a festival, but it's a, a day of experiences uh, f that are about transdisciplinary practice. And then it's a day of future casting and vision planning, not just for Leonardo, but for the a movement. Uh, if we looked at what we're, what's happening in your communities as a movement, that's what that's um, for. And then there's an, another way to participate with our Project Delphi, which is basically starting with some some simple questions, um, including as including um, one of those questions being, what questions should we ask? Okay, so here's another question. Um, could you mention the most important features or skills regarding collaborative work? I'm going to put that over to um, Luz and, and Pierluigi. Do you do you have a, a response to that? What are what are some important features or skills that you need for collaborative work? Well, I would say uh, uh, communication skills uh, to be able to negotiate. You know, because everybody from their field, they come with a set of uh, training and knowledge and you know abilities that every one of 
each one of us uh, take for granted. And maybe for the other person from that other discipline or that other area of knowledge, uh, it's, it's not, uh, it's not uh, something that uh, they take for granted as well. So, uh, you know, we need to come to, to a common ground and negotiate from zero, you know, I think, I think that will be the most uh, valuable skill, I will say, to be able to dialogue, but to dialogue for sure. I mean, not just, you know, monologue uh, with another monologue, uh, confrontational wise, but really to go in horizontal and trying to talk and get into an agreement uh, is difficult, but I think that will be the best. Pierre Luigi, do you have a response to that? Yes. Uh, um... I agree uh, with Lucia. I think that uh, education uh, is not fostering this kind of, of uh, working. Uh, and uh, I remember um, what uh, uh, Roger, Roger Marina said some times ago. In general, artists are considered as individuals. Uh, and I mean, individuality in the art is most important. Uh, individuals but why not to think that uh, uh, instead of be of having artists uh, having teams of people people that can uh, go to uh, obtain get to to goals uh, not alone in group it is it, uh, it is very important communication also um, all that that uh, work between that uh, um, that have to be forced. Okay, I, you go, you cut out there at the end there. Sorry, you you cut you cut Sorry? off again. You cut you cut out at the second half of that. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. So, um, go ahead. Okay. okay. It is very important also to foster and to uh, award a group of artists, group of people that are achieving the goal and not just one artist or one scientist. Today, the knowledge is achieved through group of people. And I think that in the future will be uh, so more and more. So, so I, I think one of the things that Pierre Luigi mentioned, and and, and this is this, this is something very true, is 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 like looking at groups of people rather than individuals, and you know we we don't live in a day in the age where we're we're honoring one you know, where we're, we're looking for that one genius, we're looking for genius teams of genius groups, and I see this trend happening more and more. In fact, this is where our direction we're going into, and this is why our network is really important because we work with just really intelligent people all over the world coming together with that sort of that ability to have that hive mind. Um, I'm gonna um, move on to this next question uh, from um, Karina uh, uh, Villamizar from the, the Universidad Popular de Cesar. And she asks, uh, is, um, is art a science? Um, so, or is there science in art? Um, I think that's sort of uh, a, a, almost a chicken and the egg type of question, but um, any any idea, any responses to that? Oh, okay. Lu Luz, you're okay. Go ahead. No, please, please. now with this uh, crossing of uh, sciences and art, actually, the artist has to have some knowledge about certain disciplines. I mean, the artist uh, has to have knowledge of its own technology, of its own, of, of what he's going to use in the making of, of his artwork. And now that also art is uh, in the core of, uh, of the universities as research, as creative research, it has to have, uh, it has to have some grounds. It's not just about this kind of romantic idea of, of making art. So I think there's, there's a lot of science in art. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna um, move on to this last question because I know we're running close out of close to time. This is from Zara Misra. Uh, how do you deal with respect of issues arising in communication with different disciplines come into contact as opposed to equal collaboration? Uh, so there's she, she says there's always an animosity between artists and scientists in collaboration, and sometimes communication is not the only thing that works. 
uh, I think that's a very important point. And um, one of the things that I always encourage people to do when going into any sort of collaboration, one is to um, is to, to remove all the prejudice and assumptions uh, out of the way, um, because a lot of people coming into any interest in collaboration, you know, to do it, to do it authentically, you have to, um, um, have, have a different perception of that, of whoever, who you're working with and that humility, the ability to also be humble and understand that even though you may, your entire life may be focused on one aspect of research, um, don't don't take that too, too seriously when you start collaborating you know allow for that humility to be there and then time and patience um i think one of the biggest things is that a lot of people don't realize is that none of this stuff is instant and it's not like you're gonna walk into a room and be like oh hey astrophysicist let's go talk about blah 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 or, you know you know that's you have to realize that it takes time and it takes trust and it takes, you have to be humble. Um, uh, you have to be willing to, um, um, like, uh, throw away what your, your, your preconceived ideas of what that other person does or what you do. Even, I don't know if any, anyone else has a comment on that. Okay. Um, all right. So if I, if I, if I answered that right, uh, Julia Cordosa asks, um, how do you manage new projects? For example, inception or application? I also think that's sort of a working method too. Right. Um, and, and it's going to dip in culturally. I don't think that the same, the same, um, way that somebody approaches a project in, in Mexico or, um, or in, um, you know, South Africa is the same that they would approach it here in the, in, 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 in the San Francisco, I can just speak from San Francisco. Um, you know, the design thinking and empathy and design is a really core thing to doing any sort of project. And, and, and it's where you start with, it's what you start with, um, and move backwards from there. Um, but I don't know how do, how do they do how do you, how do you handle this in 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 Mexico? Well, as you said, it all depends on the on the situation, what kind of project it is, and if it's coming from one person, and then we need to find another other kind of a liaison in order to make a network, or if it comes already from a group of people, if it's just about uh, um, you know, uh, looking for fundraising first, or I mean, it all depends. It all depends, but I think it's uh, each each case is a is a, is a different approach. Each, each one needs its own uh, thinking. So um, I, I'm I'm getting I'm getting the the flag up for for to, for wrap up time, but we could talk about this quite a bit more. So I encourage you all to um, come see us in person or um, just we could do another video conference and Delma is like seriously the queen of this and I don't know how she does this it's amazing and it's just like this is the second one I've participated in with the interpreters but I'm um, I want to thank uh, 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 Dr. Luz Maria Sanchez and and uh, Pierre Luigi Capucci and everyone else who's participated and, and, and been part of this this has been a really um, great conversation, and I'm going to hand it over to uh, Delma Rodriguez uh, from Anilla Cultural, who's going to uh, uh, say a few words. And if you have any questions, you can feel free to email me, uh, Daniela uh, at Leonardo Info. Um, go to Leonardo Info to get more information. Okay. Thank you, Daniele. Uh, I would like to thank uh, to Luz, Pierre, uh, all organization of Leonardo, and especially for our partners, in Kudi and CESU in Uruguay. And I would like to mention the interpret, simultaneous interpreters, uh, Rodrigo Machado, Rosana Fernandez, Romina Diaz, Emilia Blanc, Analia Britos, Lucia Perez, Elena Balestrino, um, Catalina Capelletti, Edilson Teixeira, 
Alejandro Soto and especially thanks to the coordinator and teacher Federico Grum and Alejandra Perez Faveiro. Thank you very much for this uh, first session and uh, we uh, hope that all are connected in the next session uh, 27 July. Thank you so much. Okay. Gracias. Gracias. Ciao. Bye. Ciao. Bye. Ciao. Bye. Ciao. Thank you.